In the headlines, President Mohamed Buhari arrives Maiduguri on a working visit. Police arrest three suspects over recovered 20 capsules from a Doe shrine. Family member, seven family members die from suspected food poisoning in Zamfara community. And on the foreign scene, dead toll from Algeria wildfires rises to 38. Hello and welcome to News Update on Trust Television. I am Nten Epan. Another news in full. President Mohamed Buhari this Thursday arrived in Maituguri, Borneo State, as part of a one day official visit to commission some developmental projects in the state. During the visit, the president will unveil the humanitarian support to victims of insurgency as part of activity to mark the 2022 World Humanitarian Day. The president will also commission teachers' quarters at Bulumkutu and virtually commission 500 resettlement houses at Mulai. The visit is the third working visit by the president to Maiduguri in one year after that of June 17 and December 23, 2021. Governor Omar Zulum has authorized the payment of the 30,000 Naira minimum wage to over 4,000 verified teachers in Borneo State. The governor gave the directive when officials of the Nigeria Union of Teachers, Nigeria Labour Congress, as well as those of the local government service commission visited him in government house. While lamenting the huge number of disqualified teachers, Zulum said 1,000 from the 3,000 disqualified teachers will be trained and injected into the state government's payroll upon completion of the verification exercise. The state NRC chairman earlier pleaded for the implementation of promotional benefits and areas, among others. System promotion as for common employment from 2016 to today is still lingering. Payment of 11 month arrears to re verify teachers, Your Excellency, in the LEA. An appeal for the verification of 148 staff of local government who were yet to be, who were re verified by the Kamali uh, Committee, but are yet to have approval, Your Excellency. Implementation of 30,000 minimum wage to our competent and qualified teachers in the state and then train the trainable ones. Implementation of minimum wage to local government staff. Yes. The outcome of the verification exercise has revealed that close to our 3,000 teachers don't have any certificate, any qualification. So at the end of the exercise, when you do a very thorough sort analysis, you will find out that the numbers of those civil servants that have been promoted. The police in a Doe state have arrested three male suspects while busting a ritual shrine along Asoro Slope off Ekenhua Road in Uzebu Quarters in Benin City. Deputy Police Public Relations Officer in the state Jennifer Uwegbu disclosed the arrest in a statement on Thursday saying operatives acted on information from members of the public. She said operatives of the Edo State Police Command also recovered 20 capsules from the shrine during the operation. Two of the suspects, Chimobi Okowo and Oko Samala from Afikbo in Ebonyi State. According to the deputy police spokesperson, the 20 recovered capsules include 15 males, three females, and two children. Reacting to the arrest, the Edo State Commissioner Police Abu Tuyaro directed the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of State Criminal Investigation Department, the SCID, to carry out a discreet investigation to unravel the circumstances surrounding the discovered corpses. An Ambrose State Government has commissioned a scientific probe into the sudden death of the wife of the suspended transition chairman of Newi North Local Government Area, late Mrs. Chidiabiri. Iloka. 
Ilokha's death, which was reported last week, has been shrouded in mystery, leading some people to insinuate that she was murdered by her husband, who barely spent a week in office as transition chairman of Newi North. The suspicion led the state government to set up a panel made up of pathologists from both within and outside Anambra to conduct an autopsy and ascertain the actual cause of Mrs. Iloka's death. The panel was constituted at Nandi Azikiwe University Teaching Hospital where the corpse of Iloka was deposited. The Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Abiodun Alabi, is appealing to Lagosians to see men of the Nigerian police as members of their families and not just friends. CP Alabi made the appeal at the Lagos State Stakeholders Forum on Police Accountability. The report. The Commissioner who spoke on the topic community engagement, panacea for effective police performance, said the critical stakeholders should assist the police for a more proactive policing. Let me start by saying that uh, all our strategic duties embedded in Senior Fall of the Police as, as amended is subsumed into protection of uh, lives and properties. Other focus of the Indian Police Force is actually, you know, empowered us to do are subsumed in protection of lives and properties. And it's Obvious that police cannot protect life and properties alone without the support of members of the community. There's a need for us to constantly engage members of the community. There's a need for us to imbibe the tenets and principles of community policing, which we are doing now, right now. And you agree with me that community engagement builds deeper, stronger, and lasting relationship between uh, the police organization, public organization, and members of the community. The coordinator of Stakeholders Forum on Police Accountability and Executive Director of Rule of Law and Accountability Advocacy Center, Okechuku Nwaguma, while commending the police for taking disciplinary action against erring officers, urged the force to address the root causes of police misconduct, especially among the junior ranks. I'm saying this because the media is here. We need to, we need to join our voices to condemn the unprovoked attack on police officers in the course of their duties. And you think that the family of the widow and the tender children of this officer should not be abandoned. Thank you very much. The chairperson of the occasion and the founder, Crime Victims Foundation of Nigeria, Gloria Egbuji, said the idea of the program is to promote police accountability. And most of their complaints have been that they want to do the right things, but their DPOs do not allow them. And when I opt to go and give me the name, let me tell the CP, they say no, they will reprimand them. They will post them to remove them from crime branch to any other place. Please, if, you, if you're one of your briefings, if they can allow them work. Because the police accountability forum are watching. They are also watching them. And none of them would like to see their, their, themselves reported in social media. Thank you so much, sir. Highlight of the program was awards to four outstanding police officers, namely ACP Taiwo Kasumu, CSP Abubakar Aliu, CSP Patricia Amadin, and ASP Adeyemo Uguyami for upholding professional policing standards. 17 policemen in Katsina State who have distinguished themselves in the line of duty have been promoted by the Inspector General of Police. The officers are divisional crime officers and divisional police officers at various divisional police headquarters across Katsina State. Abdullahi Yamadi attended the decoration ceremony and now reports. While decorating the police officers, the Commissioner Deuda Dabang reminded them that the promotion came with the enormous responsibility of confronting insecurity benevolent the state. I think in geography before they said the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. But now the higher you go, the hotter it becomes. Or oh, when uh, suddenly they will tell you the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. But now the higher you go, the hotter it becomes. Some of us don't sleep in the night, and some of junior ranks, they sleep and sleep and snow. High responsibilities. There are certain things if you do before, nobody may care to ask you. But now, as a superior police, 
course, most of you are the one holding. Uh, uh, that they, they are the, you are the, the one holding the higher position in the commands, like DPOs, DCOs, and whatever, whatever. So you have a lot in your hands to do. So we want you to perform up to the expectation. The Katana State Police boss says the command remains resolute in fighting terrorists until they are defeated. This must go side by side with increasing the resilience and improving professionalism of men and officers of the command to stand the test of time. The command is also saying the current fight against terrorism could only succeed if there is community participation and collaboration. Because we will not take it lightly from you. You see people are suffering, see crime and criminality increasing on daily basis. We assure the members of the public that we will do our possible best and they should collaborate with us so that we will succeed. While commending the good people of Katana State for standing firm behind police operatives at this crucial moment of insecurity, the police commissioner conversed for more synergy. The commissioner is therefore calling on the divisional police officers and their men to remain civil and friendly with their host communities, which is the only option to succeed in the fight against terrorism. Observers say the promotion of the police officers comes at a critical time and this will go a long way in motivating the police to be more resolute in battling the terrorists. Most of the officers were promoted from the rank of assistant superintendents to superintendents of police. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katana. The Lagos state government has extended the ban on commercial motorcycles, popularly known as Okada, to four more council areas. Transportation Commissioner Frederick Olajende, who disclosed this during a briefing in Lagos on Thursday, said the move followed a review of the impact of a similar ban in six local government areas. He listed the affected council areas and as LCDAs as, as Kofole local government area, Oshodi Isola local government area, Shomolu local government area, and Mushin local government area. The Commissioner assured Lagosians that the government has put measures in place to cushion the impact of the most recent ban on Okada in the commercial city, reiterating that the move is in the best interest of residents. A family of seven was said to have died after eating a local delicacy mixed with vegetables and corn at Dambaza village in Maradun local government area of Zanfere state. The incident was said to have occurred immediately after the family ate the meal, popularly known as Dambu, where four of the victims died on the spot. According to eyewitnesses' account, the seven victims that include two married women and five teenagers lost their lives almost immediately they finished eating the local meal. The eyewitness account further disclosed that three out of the seven family members were rushed to the hospital where they also later died. Zamfara State Police Public Relations Officer Muhammad Shehu, who confirmed the incident, said the cause of the death is yet to be ascertained as it is under investigation. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up after the break. Exclusive breastfeeding for newborns. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching Trust TV News Update, a reminder of our top stories. President Mohamed Buhari arrives May Duguri on working visit. And police arrest three suspects, recover 20 capsules from a do shrine. To other stories now, have you ever wondered how television stations work? And how many people work behind the scene to produce contents on your screens? Well, as Trust TV Max's first anniversary, our correspondent takes you behind the scene to meet some of the many people working to bring you the very best 
of television. Enjoy the report. Standby studio, count down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Q. From Daily Trust News Center, this is the News Hour. In the headlines. Watching the news on TV, one may never get a sense of what is actually going on behind the scenes or even the number of people that come together to produce a bulletin. Newsroom is a frenetic, energetic and sometimes chaotic place where time is of greatest value. These are the people behind the scene. What you see on screen is just a small part of what is going on. There are more professionals behind the scene who work to bring the best of TV. Television is about telling the vision. And how can you tell the vision is by these two basic things, visuals and audio. These are the two things that come together to inform what we see or what uh, our viewers see. Uh, a 24 hour news channel um, um, that is um, focused on people's oriented uh, um, reports. Uh, we uh, commission reports uh, maybe a day earlier uh, and then our team of reporters from across the country um, actually uh, send in reports uh, daily. Celebrating one year anniversary, Trust TV is out to document the Nigerian story. The first year has been quite fruitful but also very, very challenging in the sense that uh, television broadcasting is about content. And uh, as a news and current affairs channel, we try as much as possible to give you in-depth journalism coming from our background that we are a company that used to be a newspaper, but we spawn a TV out of a newspaper. And we know how newspapers are in-depth into what they do. And we didn't, buy, we didn't just pick documentary as our niche like that. It just came in the fact that people need to know more. People need to dwell on issues, not just have them in a few seconds and move on. So also uh, in our news coverage, we, like our tagline has said, documenting the Nigerian story, we tried as much as possible to tell human angle stories and uh, leave the public's medium to talk about official stories. Uh, we will cover the official stories, but our focus on human angle stories uh, stories that affect the day-to-day -day lives of people and that has to do, you can't do it sitting from the office. You have to put people on the ground. You have to send people to go to villages, to go to cities, uh, to go to hamlets, to go to the bushes. I think for the last one year we've, we've tried as much as possible to go to very difficult places to tell stories of the ordinary people. Trust TV just turned one year and has no plans of being off anytime soon. Well, that was very kind of nostalgic for me. Well, let's move on to other stories now. The federal government says modalities have been put in place to ensure that adequate and appropriate capacity is built in line with its strategic roadmap and national plan of action for aging. To this end, it is training master trainers who will develop who will develop uh, capacities and resources that will help implement the objectives of setting up the National Senior Citizen Center and SCC, the report. The aim is to, among other things, equip a national pool of trainers to be deployed for cascading training programs where needed on setting up and equipping model centers and care quality evaluation. It is also to develop benchmark statement and standard guidelines for establishment and administration of active senior citizens. Understanding and acknowledging the core human worth that is the older person and understanding that he or she is an individual um, whose independence and autonomy should be recognized regardless of the continuum or the stretch of dependence or vulnerability or frailty. 
The training, which was on models of senior centers, core competences in administration, program design, and care quality certification, was in partnership with the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. We all know that the overall action objective is that no one is left behind. And that's really the mantra of, of the DISD, that no one is left behind. So they're looking into the issues of the vulnerable, uh, the very young women, older persons, those with disability, those who are living in very rural and remote, hard to reach areas. And those are some of the people that the NSCC would definitely be looking out for. At the core of delivering on this project is the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, which has pledged to strengthen partnership with the National Senior Citizens Center to institutionalize care for older persons in the country. And part of our mandate is health promotion. How do we promote health? How do we make the senior citizens receive health and be healthy and live longer, like we have in Japan? These are some of the countries that uh, if you go there, you see elderly people very agile. You know, and what makes that, what is the magic? It's good health. At the training session, 40 select participants were equipped as NSCC go-to trainers and are expected to be NSCC's officers from the Department of Health and Social Services, Department of Senior Centers and Support Services, Elder Justice Department, Stakeholder Engagement and Community Relations Department. Exclusive breastfeeding has been described as the appropriate feeding method for newborn babies which protects babies from illnesses as well as provide them with needed nutrients for growth. Dr. Mansour Abubakar, a pediatrician with the Federal Medical Center, Burning Kirby, made the statement in an interview in Kirby State with Hamza Kaladima. His report. Exclusive breastfeeding, as prescribed by the World Health Organization, is the feeding of a newborn baby by mother's breast milk alone from birth to six months, and it's being championed now by medical practitioners because of the benefit drivable as the mother's milk contains so much nutrients that could increase the baby's immunity as well as assist the mother to fight against illnesses. Well, exclusive breastfeeding, the feeding of a newborn baby with only breast milk, mother's breast milk for the first six months of life. Nothing except uh, breast milk, except maybe, for example, if uh, medications following illnesses, maybe medications prescribed. But except outside that, exclusive breastfeeding is feeding baby newborn for the first six of months of life with only uh, breast milk from the mother. But people may wonder and ask why mothers milk when we have ready made baby formulas to feed our babies with. Dr. Mansour Abaka, a pediatrician with the Federal Medical Center, Burning Kebi, explained further that the mother's breast milk is the most appropriate food for the newborn baby as it has many advantages that cannot be gotten from a man made baby formula. Well, the benefits, as you said, are from both sides. To the baby, he gets fed nutrition, he gets um, his nutrition primarily from the mother, that's the breast milk which is requires for optimal growth of his brain and the body. It also protects with some um, condition like jaundice, neonatal jaundice also, breastfeeding also protects um, against that. Dr. Masur also said science has shown that breastfeeding has helped in reducing infant mortality rate amongst newborn babies. Hamza Galadima Zuru reporting for Trust TV News from Benin. The Registrar General and CEO of the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, Garba Abubakar, has called on small and medium scale entrepreneurs to register their businesses with the government. Abubakar, in an interview, explained that apart from boosting the nation's economy, the operators stand the chance of getting financial assistance from financial institutions. Musa Luka reports. Thousands of small and medium-scale enterprises 
dot the length and breadth of the nation who are not yet registered with the government through the Corporate Affairs Commission. This, the commission says, make the government not to be aware of their existence. This lack of registration is considered to be one of the factors affecting the nation's economy. The Registrar General of Corporate Affairs Commission, Garba Abubakar, explained that small enterprises are important in every economy, hence the need for their registration to enable them attract the needed assistance from the government. Small businesses are the injury room of every economy because the small woman, uh, the, 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 the woman selling gari, she feeds herself, she feeds her family from the proceed. She's not a burden to anybody. All she needs is stability. Some that needs other things, to access funding, you have to be formal, you have to formalize. So for those that need additional funding, either through government intervention or other things, some are coming forward to register. And we are seeing actually an increase in the number of registrations, particularly for, small, for business names. Now that the system is decentralized from anywhere in the world, you can register. You don't have to come to CSC physically. The cost of registration has actually come down. You don't need to pay a professional to register for you. All you need is to create an account in the company registration portal, and you are set to go. Abubakar added that the commission has simplified the registration process and cost by creating a direct link through which entrepreneurs can access the commissions without the intervention of middlemen. He said the cost of registration has also been cut down to 5,000 naira to ensure every entrepreneur can afford. We have so many informal businesses that have not been captured in the tax night and even the Different regulators may not even know about their existence. Right from the woman selling groundnut on the roadside to the vulcanizer. They do businesses every day. They earn money. But they are not captured anywhere. Part of it is out of ignorance. Secondly, people are afraid of the cost. A lot of people don't know that I can even you can even register yourself. So this is part of what we're trying to do, to enlighten people to know that you can approach CSC directly without going through any professional to register. And the federal government, as part of the survival fund intervention, actually approved and for CSC to register 250,000 businesses free for free for Nigerians. And this was carried out fully. Every state had 6,606, except Lagos, Ibia, and Kano. Lagos had about 9,000, Kano 8,000, and Ibia about 7,000. And this was done for free. As part of the federal government's effort through COVID-19 intervention, the commission has freely registered 250,000 small-scale enterprises across the state. Musa Luka, Trust TV News, Abuja. And with that story from Musa Luka, we conclude this edition of the news update on Trust Television. For more, do connect with us on all our social media platforms. I am Nten Ekpang. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.